Hello and welcome to Forward 40 TV. Today I'm going to show you how to make a bowl of creamy squash soup. To it, I will add a whole bunch of herbs, cinnamon, some coconut milk, and some pumpkin oil. I hope you are inspired. So yesterday, it was a really happy day to be a vegan because um, the US Health Association released some statistics that said that, you know, red meat and all the processed foods we've been putting into our body, particularly meats, are cancer forming. So I felt really good about the things that I put into my own body, things like pumpkin and squash. And today, in the squash soup to make it the ingredients are just so simple what you really need is just your pumpkin or your squash and your herbs so i use rosemary i use celery um, of course onion um, black truffle salt a smidgen of sugar some cinnamon coconut milk and pumpkin oil so to get started, you just want to chop everything really big. I, I don't want you to worry when you're making your squash soup to think that, to think, sorry, that your squash has to be chopped finely because really everything goes into a blender. So once you chop it into big chunks and you remove all the, the seeds from the squash, I typically just take the squash once it's washed and I put it into my steamer, which I already have on right here i typically do not remove the skin from the squash because i find that it takes literally only about 15 minutes when i have the skin on to remove um to to really have the steam really cook the squash i tend to you know try to do two things at once so my squash is steaming and i'm going to chop my celery Again, don't forget you want to do big chunks and not do it into bite-sized pieces. But because you want to saute this um, to bring out all the flavors of the onion and the garlic and the celery, you want to make sure that the pieces that you chop it into are all equally proportioned because that's where the beauty of the saute happens. So one of the tricks I learned is that you can use a lime and just uh, use the lime to wipe the chopping board or the area that you're chopping your onion on and that actually helps with all the stinging of the eyes and I'm going to do that now and then get ready to chop my onion because everything is going into the blender you don't have to do it too fine what you do have to remember though is that the onion slices must be of equal proportion to your celery your celery slices or your celery chunks typically in a batch of soup, I would use about two to three cloves of garlic. Everything is now ready to be sauteed. And again, beginning with my garlic first, I'll add that to my pot. Don't forget that you want to add as well, just using a wide pot, because again, you're sauteing your stuff. And I had my stove on for quite a while, so it is really hot. And I will then lower my stove or the heat or the temperature of my stove and I will add my garlic first followed by my celery because actually the celery is harder to release its flavors than the onion so I will add the celery next followed by the onions within 10 minutes of putting the squash into steam I usually take it out piece by piece and it's so easy at that point to remove the skin then if you removed it at the beginning of the process when your squash was still very tough. So it actually took about 15 minutes for my squash to be ready and I'm going to add it to the blender. It actually doesn't matter in what order you add your ingredients into the blender um, because it all gets, you know, 
blended away, so to speak. You want to make sure that your vegetable stock is unsalted because you're going to add all these other ingredients to it to really bring out the flavor of the pumpkin. So typically what I do is I pour it until it covers all the vegetables that are in the blender and it goes right up to the top of um, my blender. I don't know what I did before I discovered the Ninja Blender, but now that I have it, it's a total love affair. I'm about to take my ingredients around for a twirl. So my soup is ready to go. This is not the soup that is going to eventually materialize at the end of this video. I begin first because it's just blended with the, the vegetables and the herbs. I'm going to begin with my black truffle salt, um, which is a sea salt blend, but it really adds uh, some wonderful taste to the soup with the black truffle salt and makes it actually taste that much more exotic. To it, I will add a the tin of coconut cream. Um, the cream makes it, of course, really rich and adds a dimension to the pumpkin soup that was not there before the cream was added. So I'm just going to stir this mixture and I'm going to have it on a low heat because remember, the soup is already cooked. So you don't want to have it on too much of a high heat because by the time you get to the end of the process, the soup is actually going to be very hot. So I'm going to stir in my coconut milk and I am going to add to this blend my herbs. So I have a savory herb um, that is a mixture of a ton of herbs which I will have in the description box below and I'm going to add some of that and again I'm just going according to taste and I will add a smidgen of rosemary. I'm going to stir that in. I'm just going to taste it at this point. It needs just a touch more salt and I think that pinch will be just enough. Now adding some more magic is my cinnamon. I'm going to stir that in and to finish things off I'm going to add some sugar which marries well with the salt. You don't want a soup that's salty, nor do you want a soup that's sweet. You actually want the pumpkin and the cinnamon to stand out on its own, but the sugar adds a hint of neutrality to the soup. And finally, to my squash, and I know I added a lot of stuff, but this is my last magic ingredient, I swear. It's my pumpkin oil and uh, I actually pick this up in, at Peppercorns if you live in Trinidad, but you can get it on the internet at the Whole Foods stores and actually we will be selling pumpkin oil right on our website at the shop when we debut that in just a little bit. So I'm going to add some pumpkin oil, which I think marries well with the flavor of, of the squash. One final stir and I think we are ready to serve. Now, the soup actually smells so delicious and I love the fact that I can enjoy it while it's hot because sometimes as a vegan, you want something that's warm and soothing in your tummy and the squash soup fits the bill so perfectly. Now, I have this really funny story about this pumpkin soup. I made it for my aunt, Auntie C, and she took one look at it and said, where's the dumpling and the meat? And I found that so funny. I said, Auntie, you don't always have to have your soup with a ton of staples in it. Sometimes you just want to enjoy the vegetable that you made the original mix with. I think this is about ready to be eaten. I'm going to add a touch of vegan olive bread at the side. I really want to take three slices, but because I'm trying to lose weight, I'm only going to have one and I can't wait. Let's see how this tastes. Mmm. I wish you were here. <laughs> I wish, I wish you could taste the smooth creaminess of the soup. It is so wonderful. It's so warming. Um, come on over. I am so glad you stayed for the duration of while I made this squash soup. 
if you like this video and you want to see more please click the links below the screen we are on instagram youtube and of course on facebook follow us join us share love and like see you next time bye take care